how does it feel to finally be in the role? Well, it's hardly surprising. It feels absolutely marvellous. It's a huge honour. Um, and as I said in my speech when I was sworn in, it's a mixture of pride, but slightly intimidating for the reasons that I explained, I think. I mean, to be the 90th bailiff, that's yes. a lot of tradition and heritage that you're yes. following, isn't it? It is. Of course, the role has changed enormously since 1277, which is the first name on the board, I think. Um, we've had uh, the Reformation since then and the changes to the states of Jersey and all those kinds of things. Um, but it is a continuity of office. It's a continuity of crown appointment. Um, and it's an enormously uh, important part of our historical journey, it seems to me. You've inherited a job that doesn't really have a job description. How would you write the job description for you for the coming years? Uh, that's a very interesting question. Um, and there is, of course, a job description for the Office of Deputy Bailiff, which is pretty close. But I'm not sure that's particularly informative because it largely says, do what the bailiff tells you to do, I think. Um, it, the role of bailiff obviously has a number of different aspects to it, and they're well understood by those who have grown up in the law in Jersey. And um, they are, for example, the presidency of the court. They are the, uh, the presidency of the assembly. And linking those two together is the civic headship of the island. And so that's the high level job description. Now, you can drill down into each of those three things and say, what's the job description for each of those? But that's quite a long conversation. People we speak to say you're perhaps more of a team player than some of your predecessors. Are we going to see that reflected, do you think, in your leadership going forward? Um, I think what I am um, is someone who likes to engage with other people, to reach out to them, to bring them into in a sense, the decisions, if it's appropriate to do so. So I think what you are likely to see is an element, and I hesitate to use the word outreach, in the sense that I will be interested in telling people what the Office of Bailiff is about. Um, it's been a surprise to me um, that uh, a fair number of people really don't know who the bailiff is, what the bailiff does, and what the value of the role is. And I think that I would like to correct that if I'm able to do so. And let's talk about the office of the bailiff, because um, obviously there's been a lot of talk in the, the past few weeks about the dual role of the bailiff. Um, there was, of course, the recommendation from the care inquiry for those two roles to be separated. And we heard the thoughts of your predecessor as well. Where do you stand on this? Well, um, I'm not going to make any comments about uh, the observations that my predecessor made. Um, where I stand on the matter of the dual role is this. The office of bailiff is um, part of the constitution of the island. Um, it's part of the constitution of the assembly and it's a constitutional position within the island. So much is obvious, it seems to me. It is also open to the states um, exercising the democratic mandate that they have to change the constitution. So it's open to the assembly to do so. All I would say is that I hope if the Assembly elects to do so, they are confident that that's with the um, understanding and approval in whatever form of the people of the island. Do you think that's something we might see in the, the coming years? Uh, you mean a change in the role of bailiff? Um, I, think there will, I think it will continue to be an issue that's raised from time to time. Uh, possibly sooner rather than later, I just don't know. Um, uh, so yes, I expect that there will be more conversations about the role of the bailiff. Um, and as I say, it is a matter ultimately uh, for the State's Assembly to decide. Change of subject. Now, we've seen some protests here in Jersey this week by Extinction Rebellion. Um, you're now presiding over a parliament that has declared a climate emergency. Where do you stand on this? Uh, do you think you might be the first carbon neutral bailiff, as it were? Well, personally, um, I, uh, I'm very keen on environmental type matters. Um, and, uh, uh, but am I going to be the first carbon neutral bailiff? I'll certainly support any carbon neutral moves that we can reasonably make within, within the bailiff's department. But you say I preside over the state which is resolved in this way. That's true as presiding officer, but I'm not politically influential, no, and I should not be politically influential. The political decision is for the Assembly. I'm just there to facilitate 
the debate and the decision making process. Looking at another one of the issues that um, we've got here in Jersey, when it comes to politics specifically, a big issue is civic engagement or lack of. Mm -hmm. uh, turnout was 32% in the last election. Moving the election from autumn to spring didn't seem to work. Is this a major issue in your opinion? I think civic engagement is always potentially an issue. It was very easy, I think, in the past to say, people were not engaged civically because they didn't really feel any need to engage. Um, I'm not sure that that's right or wrong nowadays, but we do have a very low civic engagement and democracy has to be better with a larger civic engagement. So to the extent I can help with that, um, I'd certainly like to do so. Is that going to be one of your aims? Well, uh, to the extent that my aims are outreach for the bailiff's office, that will also involve, it seems to me, talking about uh, the presidency of the assembly and to the extent that that encourages people to be interested in the political life of the island then I think that will be a very valuable side effect. Do you have any kind of vision as to how it's possible to get people more engaged? I mean it's, it's an age-old question isn't it you know it's so important in a democracy to have people who truly are engaged and do turn out to vote it, you know do you have any insight into that as to how we might go about that? Uh, nothing that's um, earth-shattering. I think these things are all about communication. They're all about how you talk to people and how you make the political system, if that's how it is um, to be described, relevant to them so they are interested in that engagement. Um, and, and I'm not sure there's any better way to do it than that. That might mean outreach into schools. It might mean something different, some other form of uh, communication exercise. And I know that people think about this a great deal and work very hard in the Assembly, uh, the Privileges and Procedures Committee, for example, to consider how they can improve um, the political engagement. Um, but the bailiff's role is certainly can speak about the Assembly itself, but it's a non-political role and it's hugely important it remains as a non-political role. Um, and uh, therefore there's a limit to what the bailiff can reasonably do. The bailiff couldn't, for example, say, if you want to change A, B and C, get out and vote. Um, that's really not a message that properly comes from the bailiff's office, um, even if the bailiff held, of the day held that view. It's uh, rather more talking about the general desirability of political engagement, I think. Brexit is a live, ongoing uh, issue at the moment, obviously, changing hour to hour. Um, and we've also seen lots of debate in the last few weeks and months, the last few months, on the autonomy of uh, the Channel Islands um, becoming an issue as well. How do you see your role in protecting the independence of the islands, giving, given the changing waters in the UK? Well, a great deal of that kind of thinking, I'm very pleased to say, happens at government level because people are much more, I think, aware of the constitutional position of the island than perhaps, if one goes back a few decades, has been the case. But ultimately, the bailiff is the final guardian of the constitution. The oath of office provides for that. And that is something that I would see continuing and indeed be front and centre to the extent that I'm able to do it um, of the way I conduct the role of bailiff, which means that that will primarily be advisory. That will primarily be advising on, for example, the formulation of laws or whether particular things have a constitutional aspect and speaking out in the event that it's necessary to do so and to tell people we have a constitutional position which is valuable, important and we mess with at our peril. Looking at the judiciary uh, right here now in, in Jersey, what would you say are the most pressing issues for you at the moment? Well, I think we have an excellent judicial system. I think we've got very, very high quality judges. We're lucky to have them. Um, we have former bailiffs who preside. We have uh, commissioners of long-standing experience and we bring specialists in. So I don't think there is an issue with regard to the quality of the judiciary, nor indeed the quality of the College of Jurats. We're extraordinarily lucky to have them as well. I appreciate I'm answering your question with what's not wrong. Um, because there is nothing fundamentally wrong. I think where we need to be better 
is access to justice for people. Um, and uh, one of the things that I have in mind that I would like to see, with the help of government, is the digitalization of the courts so that they are more accessible to more people. Um, because we are seeing more and more people who feel the need to come and represent themselves for one reason and another. And we want to make that work for them so that they can come before court and get justice in a timely way. And so accessibility is one of the things I'd like to very much work towards improving. And when you say accessibility, you talk, spoke about digital. Are there any other ways that you want to try and make that more accessible? <coughs> well, there's a lot of work going on behind the scenes through Jersey Legal Information Board. Um, and a lot of work is being done by that already. A lot of work is being done, for example, in simplifying the procedures and explaining them in a more straightforward way so members of the public can engage with the court and it doesn't look like a terribly esoteric, frightening thing. It's not what the courts are about, but it's easy for us lawyers to forget that sometimes, to use an arcane um, set of expressions, not to make it clear, whereas in fact it's more or less a pretty straightforward process. And you mentioned jurats there. Obviously, Jersey and Guernsey are rather unusual, having jurats rather yeah. than jury. Is there any intention to change that? No. Um, of course, the changes to the criminal procedure law, which have just come in, um, alter the balance of trial by jury and trial by jurats. Uh, the jurats uh, perform an exceptionally important function within the administration of justice in Jersey. And interestingly enough, it's pretty well the uh, universal experience of, uh, of, of ba ba bailiffs that when um, commissioners from the United Kingdom come over and sit for the first time, experienced high court judges or judges of appeal in England, sit for the first time with jurats, they are enormously impressed with that system and say we really would have benefited from something like that back in the UK. They come along thinking, why should I sit with another two people? I'm used to making these decisions myself. And then they hear the conversation that takes place around the table and they realise how valuable the input of jurats is. There's talk of closer political cooperation with Guernsey, between Jersey and Guernsey. Would you see any merit in you working closer with the, uh, more closely with the Guernsey bailiff, with Richard Collis? Um, uh, it's difficult to, to answer that because I think we work pretty closely together in any event. Um, I personally haven't, I've been, uh, only been bailiff for two working days, so I can't honestly say I have a vast experience of working with Sir Richard. Um, but my predecessors, I know, have valued their working relationship with him. And I know he'll be retiring in May of next year, so I will work with him in the intervening period and then with his successor, who I also know. We've travelled away together in various parliamentary meetings, so we know each other quite well. So you'll be continuing as was rather than working closer? Yes, I mean, if there are opportunities to work closely together, we will find them and we will take them. But we already have, for example, um, the power in our law to bring Guernsey jurats over to try Jersey cases if there were, for example, to be a conflict um, where it would be difficult for local jurats to sit, we can bring Guernsey jurats in. The role of bailiff, the role of bailiff has got enormous amount of power to do good. Are there any specific areas, you know, any charitable causes, for example, or, or other causes that you, you'll be focusing on in the next uh, few years? No, I, at the moment I'm going through a process of considering um, patronages, which ones I might take on, which ones I might not at this point, um, and I will undoubtedly have more than my fair share of things because I'm interested in the island. I'm interested in how people work towards the island and um, I want to support people who are doing things for the benefit of the islanders, either charitably or, or more broadly in terms of um, people's social interactions and clubs and societies, things of that nature. So I suspect I'll be doing a lot of that. Is there anything I'm particularly focused on? No, not, not really. At the moment I'm still considering how I can best employ the time I've got. In your speech, uh, you mentioned that you had a suit of armour and a sword at home. Do more tell than us one. more. More, more than, than one. One sword, yes. It gets better. One suit of armour, um, more than one sword, many swords, in fact. Is that a passion? Can you extrapolate on that? Um, I can. Uh, I could extrapolate. Well, um, the short answer is since my childhood, I've been fascinated by swords. Uh, whether I saw something on television or read a book or something like that. But um, the concept of the warrior with the sword was something that appealed to the very young me. 
And that grew into an interest in um, edge weapons and armour and those kinds of things. And so I've, over the years, amassed a small collection of them. And I was, uh, for a while, um, into um, medieval reenactment. And that's the context in which the suit of armour came into existence. Um, that's really it. <laughs> uh, not happened for a long time. But it's not it, because the deputy bailiff said that he's got a Dalek at home. So are we going to see, is this kind of like a double act of super, superheroes kind of protecting the island? Well, I think the most you can extrapolate from that is that the deputy bailiff is clearly a much more modern person than I am. Um, but no, I'm not going to comment on the deputy bailiff's Dalek. That's a matter entirely for him. Timothy Lecoq, thank you very much indeed. Great pleasure. Thank you.